I just making a quick video just talking about these little inverters that you might want to consider uh, using if you got like a big power station. You know, a lot of these big power stations that have these really big inverters, you know, these things, as, as you probably know and have probably figured out, you know, these things can just use a ton of power, right? And if you want to, you know, if you want to just have this thing kind of running, um, you know, a lot of hours, 24-7 or even just, you know, several, several hours a day running kind of smaller loads, um, you know, it basically you're going to like burn through the battery pretty quick just, just because the inverter is so inefficient and just using so much power on its own, right? So um, something you might want to consider is that a, a lot of these, these bigger power stations with these bigger inverters, they actually have like, uh, like these several like 12 volt options and sometimes even 24 volt options. We'll kind of talk about that more in a second. But like this Blue Eddy uh, AC200 Max, right? This is a perfect example. Um, this thing's got, you know, a 2200 watt inverter and it does, you know, it does use a good amount of power. And if, if you want to just be running like a, like a small TV or a small like uh, desktop computer, I mean, we're not, we're not talking about like gaming computers or anything like real serious here. We're talking about small loads, like a hundred watt load, 150 watt loads, right? Something that you, you're going to be running for like several hours a day. This set, a, a setup like this is just something you might want to consider. So check this out. We actually have on this, uh, this is again the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, we get this 12 volt 30 amp um, outlet on it, right? So this is a DC outlet, and so you're not going to have the inverter running. And then one of the things you kind of want to look for, for like, to make this kind of like an, an ideal situation and setup, is, is a power station that has like a high amperage uh, DC output. So in this case, it is 30 amps. So that would be, you know, 12, you know, 12 times 30, that's 360 watts, you know, in, in, theoretically that you could, you know, pump out of here DC, right? And so this, this would just kind of pair up perfect with, you know, some of these smaller inverters that, you know, these inverters are typically used in kind of like a more of a, a D, DIY setup, you know, if you have your own battery and then you're kind of just adding a bunch of stuff to it. It's not, you know, this isn't something you typically see people with power stations do, but this is, it's a, it's a pretty easy add-on, right? Like you would basically just have to kind of, um, you know, connect two wires. Basically, you know, out of these inverters, there's just like a, a ground and then a, a, a positive, right? And you would just have to kind of um, splice that into a, a connector that works with whatever, you know, whatever plug you have. Like in this case, it's this, well, it's, you know, what I, I think this is like an aviation style plug. You know, basically it'd be two wires you'd have to deal with, right? To kind of hook up and connect. And then once that's in, you can kind of just pop that thing in. And then guess what? <laughs> you know, guess what? You got, after, after you do that, that little bit of work, you can actually have a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter, <laughs> you know, running off of your, your huge, uh, you know, Blue Eddy system, right? So this would just be like, um, and then you could just use this inverter when you need to for bigger loads, right? So this, this can just kind of be like a, like, a, like a really slick setup. Now, the one thing I will say is that, you know, if you're looking at these kind of like smaller uh, AC inverters, kind of like, you know, 200 watt, 300 watt, you know, there's a lot of cheap ones out on the market. So you want to you know, you want to try to find a good one like this. This Samlex brand I've seen um, definitely has a lot of good ratings and just seems like a quality product. And, you know, so basically, and then you want to also look sure, make sure you're going to get pure sine wave, right? Because in these kind of, Again, these, these kind of cheaper um, inverters, that's not always the case, right? Now, I have been experimenting with this a little bit myself. And what I found is you definitely want to have some kind of like higher amperage, um, kind of more secure connection. Uh, you don't want to be using the, the regular car socket. Now, you can get it to work, but it's not kind of... I've, I've kind of seen some issues pop up where there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a voltage drop issue, right? Because this, the connector is probably not real good on this. A lot of these are just 10 amps, right? So, you know, basically, even, even if you're just powering up a small TV for like 50 watts, right? When that thing first starts up, you know, every, everything has a little bit of a surge, right? And um, so that, that could cause an issue when that thing just, you know, first fires up. Because, you know, basically any of these that are using these, these standard 10 amp car sockets, these things are not, you know, designed, you know, the wiring on them is not real heavy gauge. Who knows what kind of the, you know, the resistance is like on that as far as the regulation circuit, circuitry and stuff like that. So it's just not an ideal setup. You're not going to, 
you're not going to really get too much power out of that. It's probably just not worth investing this, this kind of money into doing that if you just have like a 10 amp uh, car socket, right? Now, some power stations do have like this is the Ocotill P5000 Abril. A lot of them, you know, you'll see this like they'll have like a 24 volt uh, option as well. So this one is only actually at 10 amps. So not, you know, it's not ideal, but 24 times 10 is going to give you 240, right? And again, if you're only running like a 100 watt load, that's going to be less amps, right? That would just be like around four amps. So that would probably still, you know, probably work pretty well for that, right? And now one thing you kind of got to be aware of is that um, if you do go that route, if you do go that route, um, you got to get an actual 24 volt uh, inverter. So they do make these. <laughs> they do make these. And um, so you just kind of got to check the specs on it like right up here. 24 volt is, a, is you see it right there. And just go through um, like here, the import, import, uh, input voltage range, 21 to 33 volts. So they do have these. And like I said, what's nice about having that, that uh, higher voltage is you're just generally going to be pulling less amps, right? Which will probably um, just make it more of a, a reliable system to be using like this. Um, but if you don't have the, the 24 volt, I would just, you know, basically this is going to be mostly ideal on a, on a power station that has a very high amp on, on it, right? Because if, if this circuit can handle 30 amps, you know, it's not going to be too much of an issue if you're pulling, you know, 8, 10, 12 amps out of it, right? So yeah, just something you might want to consider as, as we kind of, you know, I'm one thing I'm still waiting for. I'm waiting for the day when we finally see like a big power station that has a big inverter and a small inverter built in, right? Like a by sized inverter setup. That would just be like, like the ultimate thing. Um, so <laughs> until then, this is kind of a, this might be like a little fun project, right? Something to, to try out. And uh, hopefully you just kind of found this uh, interesting or intriguing or helpful. And yeah, thanks for watching.